my name is Mark Bennett. Uh, I work in the Learning Technologies team at Newcastle University. I'm here today with my colleague, Michael Davies. And we're going to talk to you about student representation and feedback and how we developed a feature set within our existing university app to facilitate this process. So before we begin, we're just going to give you a little overview of the university app itself because I think it adds extra context to the, the My School project and the features that we uh, subsequently developed. Uh, then we want to talk a little bit about the challenges of student representation at Newcastle, in addition to handing over to Mike, who will take you through the actual My School feature set, and then we're going to talk a little bit about next steps. So to begin with, back in 2014, we decided to, to develop an app, and we wanted to make sure that the technology was customer focused, and to ensure that our staff and students' experience of our IT services um, were, were, were accessible uh, and readily available on any device. So we needed to make sure that whichever development approach we took was both sustainable and adaptable given how dynamic the mobile marketplace can be. And like I said, ensuring that it's accessible on any device. So this is what our app currently looks like. And what it does is for staff and students, they can log into the app. Uh, so here we have Marty. Marty's logged into the app, he's a student, and the app just pulls in all information that's relevant to him uh, at this specific point in time. So we can see up at the top here, he gets an overview of his library account. Uh, he can see, for example, he's got a Google video, so he need to return that. Next up we have uh, an activity feed for the day, so he can plan his day, you can see what, what lectures and seminars he has to go to in addition to uh, integration with our campus map so that he can also obviously we're finding and find out where the room is because that's a common problem that we're finding increasingly as uh, teaching space is in short supply, uh, students are getting sent to other areas of campus that they're just not familiar with so that's been really beneficial and also for a personal element the app knows that Marty is a member of our gym so it presents him with uh, the gym availability and the option to class uh, at, at the gym. Now these two elements at the bottom here, uh, these are news channels that's powered by our digital signage system. So he's been able to subscribe to these channels um, and he can receive regular updates uh, based on his interests. Now as with other university apps, uh, I'm sure your apps are quite similar in the sense that we have a, a common feature set in terms of students being able to access their personal timetable and also their exam timetable when it's available. They can manage their library account, search the library catalogue, they have the ability to look up learning spaces uh, to find availability to, to study. We're finding opportunities with the campus map and also the ability to contact members of staff by searching the directory. But where we think our, our app stands out is that it's also available on the desktop. So when Marty logs into the campus desktop, that information is actually carried across, so he gets the same functionality in addition to some context specific information. So, for example, the teaching cluster that he's in is actually good for teaching in the next hour, so he's going to have to make a move somewhere else, which we then link him to our Find a PC feature so he can find out where else to study on campus. So, the app itself, we have over 18,000 active users, and it's heavily used in our undergraduate population. We've got 86% of undergraduates using the app at the moment. It's available across campus on all campus PCs. In addition to this, it's also the news feeds that I mentioned are powered through our digital signage uh, system. And we have screens around campus displaying the same news, the same content. So there's just that flow of information throughout the entire campus. Now, in terms of the development, we were very conscious that resources tight and we needed to deliver more for less. Uh, so we looked into a hybrid approach using a mobile development framework called Ionic. Now what this allows us to do is instead of having our developers learn several different programming languages to support multiple platforms, we can deliver cross-platform support from a single code base. And what's even better about it is that it's all web-based, it's all web technology, so the, the, the developers only need to be aware of HTML and JavaScript to be able to code for the app. Um, and the second big win uh, with the framework is also that it's modular. So this has allowed us, especially with the My School project, 
to be able to unbundle elements of the app and give our developers sandboxes to develop new features. So this allows for rapid development and iteration. Uh, and especially when we come to recruit student developers such as Mike, this allows um, for greater flexibility and uh, just to create features relatively quickly based on end user feedback. And the final thing I just wanted to touch on is the, our data feed service because this is what powers the entire system and we're very fortunate in Newcastle to have a mature data feed service so we can give our developers access to a catalogue of feeds, um, some common that cut across uh, the desktop, mobile and the signage screens and some more specific for individual services and they are able to obviously combine these feeds to create new features. Now an additional benefit is that we can work with third party data as well, so for example our students union have given us access to their system and the, the feeds that we get from them have actually been used to create this student representation feature that we're going to talk about. So we were approached by our students union um, to see if there was a way that we could actually facilitate the uh, academic representation program that they run on campus. So they've got a dedicated team set up that is there to make sure that the student voice is heard both at a course, school and faculty level. Now the, the team itself employs, uh, coordinates a group of course reps uh, who attend committee meetings within their schools and represent student, uh, student issues at those committee meetings. So what we wanted to do is initially just get some feedback from the reps. So we ran a series of focus groups to just identify if there were any common themes and challenges that they were facing. And these are what they listed. Um, so there was three common issues around visibility, transparency and actually being representative. So in terms of visibility, we found out that many students didn't know who their rep was. Some didn't even know what reps actually do. So this was in itself a challenge. And for the course reps themselves, uh, they're okay obviously if, you, if you're a postgrad, you've got a very small uh, group of peers, maybe about 20, but for some of the undergraduate courses, you're looking at an excess of 200 students that you're meant to represent. So that in itself is, is a challenge. And then finally, in terms of the actual process, the feedback process, so both in terms of it being transparent, so the information, the students' feedback to their rep, that goes into the committee, and then the committee pass that on up the chain, but it would rarely actually filter back down to the individuals who initially raised the, the, raised the problem in the first place. So we wanted to look at a way of actually just completing that feedback loop. Uh, and then also in terms of representative, uh, the, the course reps also had a concern that some of the issues being raised, just how representative are they of the actual core? Or is this an individual bugbear, or is this actually an issue that really needs to be looked into, or is it just something for a personal tutor to address with the individual student? So we really felt that uh, if creating a feedback mechanism, it, it's very timely, uh, especially with the TEF Lumen. I thought it was really important that the student voice is heard and it's, there's a clear feedback loop, so we, we can definitely see there's a need for this. So we set up a project team uh, involving the member from the academic community, uh, representative from the Students' Union and myself from the IT department and we applied for funding through the University's Innovation Fund uh, which is designed to pump prime new developments uh, related to teaching and learning and the student experience and help disseminate those around campus. So our idea or our aim was trying to collate student feedback, collect it, analyse it and then uh, allow the school to analyse it rather and then feed it back to the students so we wanted to have a full feedback loop so we, we applied, we were successful, we got some funding and we blew all of that funding on student developers uh, to, to run the project which was great uh, so now I'm going to hand you over to Mike uh, who's going to talk about the My School feature. Thank you, cheers. Alright, so good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Mike and I'm the current student developer that's working on the app. Uh, I'm also part of the digital platforms team at NUIT. Alright, so a little bit of info about my school. So after running a series of focus groups with course reps and staff facilitators, we were able to clearly define a feature set. And building upon the existing university system, we set out to create an intuitive experience for our students, and this is what we landed on. So we've got the ability to vote on school issues and see the results of the poll, the ability to contact the reps directly the ability to view school news and upcoming events and job opportunities. 
Semi-live. Yeah. We weren't that brave. Yeah. <laughs> so, good starting point is the homepage. I'll not go into too much detail as Mark's already brushed over it. Um, but we can access my school from the side menu over here. Uh, so, first up, as I mentioned, this is the My Reps feature. So, from here, the student can view all of the relevant reps. This is just a list of everybody. <coughs> from there, if they want to, they can message the rep. Uh, it's worth note as well that the message goes directly to the reps' uni university email, so there's no kind of like mismatch of communication for any of the reps. Uh, it also sends the, uh, the student's university email as well as a sender ID, so the rep can easily contact them back. Uh, next up is this targeted polling system that I mentioned. Uh, this is really interesting because we're able to kind of knuckle down to a, a stage level and a module level, so this allows us to directly um, we get in touch with a, a really specific area of students. <coughs> so from here, admins are able to put out polls, in this case they need paper handouts. Um, they're, allowed, they're also able to uh, put a number of answers available, so I've got three here. If you just click on one of them, from here we bring up a number of votes. Uh, I've also got a percentage and the graphs. Uh, so this gives us a good idea of how the whole cohort is kind of represented. Uh, next up, my personal tutor. This works very similar to the my reps. Um, essentially, again, goes to the university email, send your ID so they can get back in touch with the, uh, the user if need be. All right. So the last little feature that we've got is the school news. Uh, this is again pretty cool, same as how polls works. So it's targeted down to a, a modular level. Uh, again, this can, yeah, this can go to relevant students if need be. So. What, an example of a school like you said we did, this is kind of like typical feedback. Uh, this is usually used by reps or uh, committees just to kind of say, yeah, we've acted on an issue and this is how we've solved it. So, SSC pre-meetings, this is just kind of to advertise what's coming in from the, the agenda, stuff like that. Placement opportunities. Um, this, this, is really, this works really well actually because, say if a student from sociology, um, they wouldn't want to, they wouldn't they wouldn't want to know necessarily about careers opportunities that's going on for a computer science student. So this is where the kind of the targeted system comes in really well. We've also got the share feature. Uh, so this works with obviously Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the, all the, big, all the big social media. Uh, the read more button. This just allows, allows students to get a little bit more detail on a specific news item if they're interested in that. Alright. So back end and how it all works. Admins can read from my like, student committee to a staff member. So this is kind of the first page that will be graded with when they're on the posts. From here they can view all the posts that are available. Uh, for example we're in the dentistry school at the minute and these are just all the posts that are live. Uh, the posts that are live, sorry. So we've got examples of the program type, the programs, the module, the stage. So this is how it's kind of filtered down to levels. We've also got a date, so this is when it's published and when it expires. So, as an admin, and you want you want to add a, add a new post, you go from title. You've got the kind of read more link there, which is the permalink, and we've got a little bit more detail on the actual uh, news item. Down the left-hand side, there you can see categories. Um, if it was a live, which was, it would have been a bit too risky because we've had a bit of technical problems. But yeah, uh, so we've got categories, and then underneath that, we've got the stage, module, course, etc. That's where the, t the targeting system comes in. Like I mentioned. You can schedule these posts to go out whenever you like as well. All you need to do is just simply click the update or publish button that's over there. Polls, very similar way. We try to keep the interface as simple as possible so anybody can use it, uh, just not, not just kind of techie guys. Um, this is just similar, I mean, you can see all of the posts that are currently live, who's, who's voted on it, when it went live, stuff like that. Again, question, how many answers you want, who you want to target it to, and publish. All right, so. So far, my school has been piloted in six schools and three faculties in semester one. We're hoping for like an overall rollout in semester two. That'll include all the features that I've mentioned. <coughs> so far, we've had very positive feedback from student reps as well. Right, so a little bit of feedback. Uh, better than Facebook. Uh, not trying to say that we're competing with Facebook, but uh, yeah, we found out that a lot of people were using Facebook, like a lot of students were using Facebook to, cut, to keep in touch with students, like fellow students. Um, but not everyone 
necessarily want to be associated with it. So we're like, right, okay, what can we do with this? We came up with the polling system. Uh, actually, it's worth mentioning as well. Facebook has a polling system, but again, it comes down to do you actually want to be kind of associated with, with Facebook? Do you want your fellow peers to know what you're polling or something? So yeah, the solution to this was the anonymous polling system. Um, it's worth noting as well, on the login, I will log into this, uh, the app, it's kind of automatically done. So the, the anonymous system was, was quite a good idea because not everyone wants to be associated with giving neg negative feedback on it. But yeah, um, next up, you said we did. Like I mentioned before, reps want to be able to say, yep, you've, you've raised this issue, this is how we've done it. So that was a really good way. This is normally done with the news, the news uh, channel like I mentioned before. And as Mark was saying, it completes the kind of feedback loop. So, a little bit of negative feedback, but we're working on it, we're, we're getting there. Um, there was the, the need to kind of keep checking the app to see if there's, if there's news coming up or if there's a, a, a big poll coming up. I mean, the obvious solution to that one was push notifications. Um, that's currently in development and we're hoping to get that one out in semester two. So basically how that one's going to work, when you're going to create a new post for a news item or a poll, you've got the option of when you want to publish it, send out a push notification, all relevant students will get that push notification. Hopefully, that should increase the audience and the visibility of it. So yeah, like I mentioned, next steps from my school, we've got push notifications, don't need to say much more on that. Ideation, what I mean by that is kind of taking it down to a grassroots level. So, we'd like to get more students engaged, but obviously there needs to be a bit of moderation between that one, we can't just have anyone posting polls because who knows what we'll get. Um, we'd like to be able to offer it to other services. We've had interest from the library and the careers, Career servers already, but again, we need some kind of governance between ourselves and them because we're, not, we're very conscious of like spamming students, we don't just want to make, yeah, get a load of, load of random stuff on the feed. So, yeah, that needs to kind of work between ourselves and them. Yeah. Um, so, the, the system itself, as I mentioned, it's modular in terms of the development framework we're using, uh, and this obviously lends itself very well to being open source. Uh, so, we've already made the digital signage component open source, it's available for download uh, at that link there. Uh, and that's the system that obviously powers the screens on campus in addition to the targeted polls and news items. So, you're obviously free to download that, but more importantly, it would be really good if we could set up a community of interest around this, if people are interested. I, I know it goes against the grain of sort of buy it, don't build it, but I think the benefit, for us as well, the benefit of actually having Mike uh, as a student placement involved, we've, we've actually now got an industrial placement as part of our IT service in our, in our area, so the, there's going to be student developers now coming through year on year developing new features, and this is great because it, it, they're the ones, like you're, you're the one who has all the ideas for new features or, or, or problems with the services that they can be improved, so it just gives a new perspective on the whole development and the, the student voice. Um, so that's that's what we have for you today. Um, hopefully you'll come and talk to us. Uh, but I'll, I'll take any questions now as well. Yes? Firstly, I'd like to join your community. Uh, yes, yeah. great. Uh, we were the previous presentation to the Strathclyde University here. Oh, yes, yeah. Do they sell one thing? It's kind of looks great. Um, one thing I wanted to ask was about your administration back end. allows us to do um, from an administrative level because there was a, a governance concern with schools um, in the form of they, they, were, they weren't sure admins didn't have enough time to, to do this kind of thing so it was kind of the idea um, the one that most schools are adopting is to devolve it to students so what we can do is set up uh, students as contributors so the, normally it's the, the um, student chair and student secretary involved with the committee get involved in this and so they, they will contribute to it and then the admin can moderate it and send it but then other, other schools are going one step further and saying you're the student chair, you're the student secretary, you know the, this is this is a serious role if you misuse this system, you know there's an audit trail so and also we've got to give them credit, they're, they're very mature individuals so I don't think at that level there's some are mature individuals. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I always include you. Um, but yeah, so it's. I think that's that's important. But the the thing is with. The
the system. It allows that flexibility. The school can decide on the government's model by just providing the tool.
especially with the desktop version, we, we, we see that sort of as a, just a portal into the rest of the services, just high level notifications of things that they're aware of. There's no, no point reinventing the wheel for the sake of it. If there's, got, if there's a nice responsive website we can throw them out to, we're going to do that as well. And that's also allowed for quick, uh, quick wins. It's not 